Hey guys, it is your boy Nathan here, and you're watching Robot Masters. So, I got the Brava Jet M6. This guy's been collecting dust for a long time, and I decided to bring him out again. Well, what's new about this guy is I just received a new update called 3.0.11. I want to thank Trans Am, a little buddy that told me, hey, guess what, Nathan? You got a new update. I'm like, what? No way. And I checked my phone, and yes, I got the update last night, so thank you for letting me know. And Besides the update for this guy, I also got the update for the Roomba S9. So yes, all three of my Roombas, the Bravo Jet M6, the Roomba S9, and the Roomba i7 has the keep out zone, or people call it the no-go zone. So let's go ahead and check this guy out. Okay, next step is to launch into your app and verify you on the 3.0.11 update. It should automatically update if the robot is connected to Wi-Fi and on its charger. Alright, let's jump into the smart mapping and you should be able to see a little tab that says keep out zone down and below. But since I'm a noob and don't know how robot vacuums work, I kept pressing on my kitchen tab and of course it didn't work. I had to click on that little keep out zone tab at the bottom there. Finally, I got the little red square thing to pop up. I do apologize for my lack of intelligence. I am still new at this thing. Okay, do you see the four little dots or handles? You can move the square around and once you're done, there's a save button and you can add your next keep out zone. I did four for this demonstration. Okay, so it looks like the Bravo M6 is off to a good start. Avoid the first obstacle there. And you know there's a little blue glow or ring on the robot. Well, it's letting you know that it hit the keep out zone boundary and it's going to try to avoid it. What do you guys think? Is the Bravo M6 doing a good job? It got super close to this. I was scared for a second, but it looks like it's doing a great job so far. So don't leave yet because I got the wet mopping mode coming right up with some paper, but it looks like it's doing good with these water bottles. And if you like this type of video, please smash the like button. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Nathan. This is Robot Masters. I do a lot of crazy testing. And you know, you guys are all awesome. You guys let me know if there's a new update for my robots. I do appreciate that. Because sometimes I don't always check every day on my updates. So thank you for giving me the great feedback, the thumbs up, the thumbs down, whatever you guys like to do. I appreciate all the feedback, views, comments, everything. So stay tuned. I got the next part of this video coming up. But we're going to finish up this video. Oh my gosh, did you see that? It got super close. So, as I'm observing this Bravo M6, I was wondering how in the world does this work? Because the camera is kind of faced upwards a little bit towards the ceiling, so it can't possibly see these objects. So what I suspect is the robot is relying on its encoders. What a real encoder does is it actually counts the revolutions the wheel is turning, and that can calculate the distance the robot travels. So that's why you probably want to make sure your A is really large, so it gives room for error for the encoders. Um, that's the only reason I can think of that how this keep out zone works. It probably also relies on like accelerometers and gyros. And look, it's done. You guys want to see how it charges? Let me flip you guys around. Like that? You probably get all dizzy there, but check it out. There's my other set of robots. And I apologize for my table, it's all messy.
Okay, I'm gonna replace these water bottles with some paper and we'll see how well the wet mopping does. Okay, got some paper here. We're just gonna replace the water bottles. Then we'll put a piece of paper here. We'll do another one right here. And then it looks like we've got two in the back there. So, why am I using paper? Well, I want to see if the wet mopping mode will spray onto the paper. If it does, it will soak up the paper and I'll definitely tell if it sprayed this area. So, the robot has to avoid the area and it has to avoid spraying the area as well. Ooh, I'm doing my workout today. You guys notice that? It spun around and spread over here, but it did spray onto the paper. So it looks like I hope I did account for the spray now, so make sure it doesn't spray onto the keep out turn. Good job, I robot. So, what do you guys think? What is your favorite robot vacuum or robot mop? Do you guys like the Bravo M6? Do you guys like the I like W400? Are you guys a scuba lover? What's your favorite? Well, to be honest with me, I like the iRobot series a lot because the iRobot robots have a lot of great uh, what do you call that? Creature comforts? Yes, it has a self empty fin. It also has the ability to use Alexa and tell the robot to go to a certain room. That's one of my favorite features for the iRobot. I think the iRobot really did a good job making a very easy and friendly user interface. Alright, let's get back on to watching this little guy work. So, have you guys been waiting for this keep out zone feature? I've been waiting for about two months. I did get it for my Roomba i7 about a month ago, and I thought all three robots would have it. Okay, so you may notice that the robot's really not spraying much. Well, here's how I have this robot set up in the wet mopping mode. I have it on extended coverage. I also have it on the minimal spray. The reason why I did this is because on my hardwood floors, I notice if I have it on the medium or maximum spray, it actually puts too much water down. So I don't want that. So I want it on minimal spray. But if I jump over to my master bathroom, I can have it on medium or high spray since it's tired. But for hardwood floors like mine, I definitely don't want a lot of water on them. So I put minimal spray. Um, yeah, it's doing a good job. I haven't noticed any uh, spray onto the papers yet. So good job. One thing to note is someone told me that they actually improved the cleaning algorithm too on the wet mopping mode, so you won't notice as much tire streaking. Okay, so it looks like the robot's almost done. It's gonna finish up in a perimeter sweep. But you're probably asking, why in the world do I have so many robot vacuums? Well, I am an avid collector. I do collect robot vacuums. Eventually, I might add older robots. I do like the older Roomba series, like the 500, the 400. I also had an older Edo bot back. It was like the bot back 80. I love that robot. It looks like an old Atari NES controller. But I'm a big avid robot fan. I'm a big technology fan. And guess what guys? I got some new smart glasses, which I'll showcase on my channel, where I can actually control the Roombas with these cool smart glasses. I know they're not Google Glass. One thing I did notice is it does do a better job doing the perimeter sweep when it's done. It's just able to get along the edges pretty well. Good job, little guy. Doing good. So, I have one question for you guys. If you guys own the Bravo M6, do you leave the water when you're done with the robot or do you actually empty it out? I was wondering that to myself. In the instructions, it actually says you can leave the water in the robot and have it be ready for the next cleaning one. But I don't know, it kind of feels like leaving water in the tank will leave mildew and start stinking. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you guys do own a mopping robot, which you guys do. Do you guys do 
need the water or you guys rinse it out each time. Me personally, I actually empty out the water tank, let air dry, and then call it a day. I don't know. So, I had this on the extended coverage mode, but it seemed like it took a really long time, about 15 minutes to finish this job. Okay, looks like this little guy's done. Well, have a great rest of your day, be safe out there, and I'll see you guys next time, sometime, I don't know when.